Hi everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my She Shed slash art studio named Creative Cottage Studio. I'm so glad you're here. If this is the first time you've been to my channel, then you don't know that I am a artist and a art teacher and that I am completely passionate about all things paper, clay and vintage and that's usually what my content is about but i also am a huge nature lover and i love to garden and today's episode is all about processing gourds to make them into bird houses and that might be a little bit of a different subject matter for my normal viewers but i think you'll find that i'm gonna somehow bring it back to paper in the end and i'm gonna bring it back to some of the other projects that i love to teach and if you're here because of the gourds then maybe there'll be something else on my channel that will interest you so i'm just super glad you're here so why am i talking about gourds today on the second day of spring finally beautiful we're all planning our gardens we're thinking about what seeds we're going to plant we're not usually talking about a fall you know plant that we harvest then well the reason we're talking about it now is for a few reasons number one we're talking about it because we're planting our gardens right now we're planning them and i would say if you have a little bit of a sunny spot in your garden planting gourds are super fun. Not only are they prolific and beautiful and lots of flowers and they trellis everywhere, but you end up with something that you can make things with after. You can make birdhouses, you can make bowls, you can make all sorts of projects. Second, if you're a bird lover, then you can make birdhouses in the spring from these gourds and let's face it, the more we can attract birds to the, our yard, the more insects we, we're not bothered by, like mosquitoes and things like that. And, you know, they're wonderful gifts to give, especially like for Mother's Day and to teachers at the end of the school year. So it's, it's a really fun thing to work with. Now, if you're a total newbie, like I was planting them last year, you just assume they're gonna be ready for Christmas? No, they're not gonna be ready for Christmas. They're gonna need the whole winter to cure. And if you're somewhere cold, like here in New England, it's perfect, because you just literally leave them outside and nature does the work for you. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, I'm not an expert at gardening. I've only been gardening for about five years, and for the first four of those years, it was in a community garden, which means they set the deadlines on when you planted and when you pulled up. And that is too short of a season for me to plant gourds, so last year was my first year planting them. So I'm not here to say I know everything about gourds and everything about processing them into birdhouses, but what I will say is I'm gonna tell you all the things I did right, all the things I did wrong, and hopefully give you enough tips that you can figure out what works for you. Because that's what this channel is all about. It's all about having fun, uh, just being creative, however that is. You don't need to be an artist to be creative. And it's about loving nature and just having fun with your hobbies. So let's get started and we'll jump right into turning this into this. Even though this is a video about processing gourds into birdhouses, it is the spring and we're planting our gardens. So if you're planning on potentially growing gourds, there's a few things you should know. They need sunlight, they need direct sunlight. So plant them somewhere where it's hot and sunny. Also, they need well-drained soil. And I plant them in mounds like you would plant pumpkins or other squash. I believe you could also do them in deep pots with the right soil in them. They just need to make sure that they can trellis or spread out, so make sure there's a structure for them to hang on or spread out on. When they grow their fruit or their gourds, they start out green and then turn into this milky, creamy white color on the vine. They're really quite striking. And the vines are really strong, so don't worry about them hanging. As long as the vine is supported, they will uh, support the weight of the gourd. And there's all these beautiful papery white flowers, 
and really nice lush leaves. It's really beautiful to put on a trellis or on some kind of structure so that they can grow up and out. It's, it's really impressive and would also provide quite a bit of um, privacy like on a deck or in a corner of a garden. Now in this picture, forget what's in the, kind of ignore what's in the foreground and look towards the back on the fence. And that is all of the gourds trellising. So you can really see how lush and thick they grow. And they're very low maintenance. Just throw some water on them and they're good to go. The only thing you have to watch for is caterpillars. And if you, you know, do find the caterpillars, you'll have to treat them. Um, I did it naturally with soap and just took them off. And it just adds to the interest of the skin. So it's really not a big deal. One thing I would not do again, which was a big mistake, is harvest them. Next year, I'm going to let nature do its thing. I'm going to keep most of the harvest up on that fence and let them just weather outside and get exposed to the elements because that's what makes the skin interesting and mottled. And I find they don't get as moldy outside because there's such great airflow. I'll also take some of them and put them in a more protective area as long as it has good airflow. Because again, the mold is what I'm trying to stay away from, but I do want it to cure over the winter. They're a super easy and fun plant to grow. And now that you've heard everything about growing gourds, let's turn them into birdhouses. So here we are outside on a beautiful spring day. That's Honey Girl. Hi, honey. How are you doing? And today I'm doing something a little bit different for a project. I'm gonna go over here to my pergola. And you're gonna see that I have three piles of gourds that I grew last year in my garden. Okay, that's my other dog barking. I, since it was my first year growing gourds, what I decided to do was put them in three different areas to see how they would weather. So I had read a lot online about gourds weathering differently and I wanted to make my job a little easier. I also wanted it to be safe because I heard there's a lot of molding and I didn't want to put them somewhere that I was going to breathe it in. So this first group of gourds I put under my house. I don't know if you can see, but my house is like elevated and I have this space underneath the house. Well, this was a perfect space because there was airflow they were kept dry they were exposed to the freezing weather which helps you know make them uh get light inside dry up everything inside and uh it wasn't like in a space i had to breathe and it was also somewhat protected from animals that's the biggest group of gourds that i did and what i found is i think those are the ones that have weathered the best they're light and airy but they don't have mold spots on them. And I don't think there's as much dark blackness to them. But once I start cleaning them off, I'll find out. The second group of gourds I have, it's such a bright day, I'm sorry about my shadow, um, is I these were in my garage. Now I had seen places that had said, don't put them somewhere where you're going to breathe them in because you get so much mold. Well, these are the only ones that actually got this amount of mold on them. So I definitely probably would not put them somewhere inside. Again, they got airflow when my car door, the garage door went up and down, but it was more like an inside shed or something like that where the airflow is diminished. And I got a lot more of that, that molding on the outside. And then the last two, were my last two gourds to grow. So I left them on the vine and I actually just left them out in the garden. They not only were the ones that turned light the quickest, but they do have this neat kind of white area on the, on the back. I'm thinking next year, depending on how these come out, I will either do under the house or just keep them in the garden hanging. Some people have said the ones that are left outside, sometimes animals get to them. But I'm gonna clean them up now and let's see how the three sets uh, do. Okay, after watching a bunch of videos, I um, watched sanding videos and it had said you need to be careful because mold, you could breathe mold in and it makes a lot of powder. I've seen people who just scrub them down with water. So that's what I'm actually gonna try. So I'm gonna start with, I've picked a couple from each batch. 
So I have six or seven here. I have one that, this was the last gourd that was on the vine. It probably didn't get to full um, growth, but I let it stay there and it collapsed. But there might be a project I can do with this. So I'm not giving up on it yet. So I'm going to, I have a hot pail of water with soap in it and two different kinds of scrubbies. And I'm gonna see if I can scrub these down. And there's my cute dog. Say hi, Piper. Okay, oh, and there's Honey. They're always so curious to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I did first. And this I would put under the category of, I would not do this again. So after watching lots of videos, I had decided that it sounded like sanding was very messy and you had the possibility of breathing in mold. Now, because mine weren't very moldy, I probably could have done that, but I decided I would go the washing route. But as you can see this, I got this green sort of layer here that as soon as the gourd got wet, all of this green layer turned into sort of this like slimy algae coating that was very difficult to get off. In the end, it took me forever to wash these um, six gourds, and then I needed to leave them out to dry. Now today, a day later, I decided to do the other six a different way. Yesterday was gorgeous and sunny, and they dried further, which is a tip. I would let them dry in the sun on a really nice warm day for a couple days before you even started processing. And then I just, if you saw, I just started taking the outside layer off with my hands. Then, you know, I because I craft all the time, I have a whole variety of sandpaper in my basement. So I started with like a 240 grit sandpaper just to get the, the big stuff off and then move to the finer grits to do the final polishing. As you can see, way easier than washing it. And I could tell that layer that had turned into algae was just sort of getting polished right away with the finer grit sandpaper. In the end, I probably finished the same amount of gourds and a fraction of the time that I did washing and drying. And even if you wash your gourds, you have to do some sanding. So I say, unless you have really moldy gourds, just skip the washing skip step and go right into sanding. The next step is kind of therapeutic you'll find that your gourds um, don't really make any noise. So you have to start sort of hitting them firmly against something solid and breaking up everything inside until it sounds a little bit like a maraca and you can hear those seeds moving around. Breaking them up breaking up what's inside with firm movements of shaking and hitting it against something hard is going to make your life easier once you drill the hole. So let me now show you, or let's listen to what a gourd sounds like before you start breaking up the insides. So the next step after you've sanded and cleaned your, your gourds and you've broken up what's inside is drilling the holes. We went and got a special attachment for our um, drill. It's just a hole saw and you can get them in different sizes depending on what kind of hole you want to drill. So we'll do that now. So here we're using a one and a half inch hole saw attached to our hand drill and different hole sizes attract different birds but this this is where we wanted to start my only tip is really take it slow so it doesn't tear up the gourd so the next step is to get everything out and if you've done a good job of um, you know kind of hitting it against things it's not too hard and you can use those seeds to plant next year's uh, crop. So that's a bonus. I don't know if you can see it's so feathery in here. It's like the webbing. You know, like when you open a squash or pumpkin and it's all that fibrous material you scrape out. 
That's what's in the gourd, but over the winter it dries and it's soft and almost like cotton. Just imagine little birds making nests in that. So one of the things about my videos is you can go on and uh, look for a gourd video and you're gonna get all the same steps. But I like to approach a project and do a video of a project and really give you all that extra information. So I just did a bunch of gourds and they were fairly dry, really papery, really soft. But this one, and maybe it's the shape, maybe it was just the way that it dried. It's not all dry. If I put my finger in, it's kind of sticky. And I want you to see what came out isn't like this nice paper soft cottony material with light colored dry seeds. What came out was almost like wet paper towels and the seeds are like dark and sticky. So probably this one just didn't get as dry as the others. So I, it'll probably just need to now dry outside, but I don't know if that moisture that's in here would be now something that could get mildewy. So that's a concern because you want your gourds to be nice and dry and everything inside to be dry so that it's a nice dry, non-mildew uh, living area for your birds. So having it be sticky and wet inside, I'm gonna have to look and find out if that's a problem. So I'm all about um, using what you have and not buying new things. So if you've ever put down um, landscaping paper, you need to have landscaping staples. And we had a whole box of them in the garage. And I thought they would make perfect hangers, not only because um, of their shape and size, but also um, I figured I wouldn't have to try to th thread that, that string through which is a nightmare and it would provide a really um, durable hook. Now we're drilling pilot holes on each side of the gourd and we're giving pets. Right Piper? Where's that one we're gonna use? So we took a landscaping I guess pin and um, took a what pliers and folded it into an L. And then my husband put some pilot holes in and pressed them in. Here, watch. He's demonstrating for us. I like the idea of string, but everybody says it's a nightmare to get from one side to the other. And anything that can make it easier. Nice. Okay, guys, here's my really ugly gourd. The one that probably never got to maturity. You can tell by how small this is. And it just sunk in once it got frozen. But what I really love about this one is I just cut the front off of it. And you can, you can see inside. And it's almost silvery. I wish you, I hope you can see the texture. Let's see if I can get in there. Do you see that? It's almost like insulation. Now, I've read that you should try to keep your gourds light so that they don't get too hot for the birds. I'm wondering if this provides insulation. Okay, guys, I cut off the face and it is wild. I don't know if you can see how shiny it is. This literally feels like styrofoam. And the other thing is, do you see the layers? Do you see the layer of the inside like foam bit and then the shell? I'm thinking that this is why gourds make such lovely nests because there definitely is that soft insulated center of the gourd that would provide a really comfortable place for babies. Now this gourd, it's, the skin is very thin and it, there is some moisture between the two layers. I'm gonna keep it in the sun and you know, maybe I'll figure something else with it. Maybe it'll be a ladle. Maybe I'll find some kind of decor thing I can do. Maybe I could plant succulents in it and make it into a pot. 
it's not going to be a birdhouse, but I will figure out something else to do with it. I'll just dry it out. But I do love that I get to see that nice inside of the gourd. And speaking of the inside of the gourd, because I cut it open, you can see these little sections or pods inside full. Let's go over here to my seed pot. They're just full of seeds. So even though it did not, you know, do the best as far as a birdhouse gourd, it provided some seeds. And I'm telling you, this inside material is this, it's like soft paper. It's almost like handmade paper. It's beautiful. And I am going to find a way to use this as well. Because if you subscribe to my channel, you'll know that I'm a paper artist and an art teacher. So I like to look at all sorts of natural things that I can use in my projects. And I think this is going to find its way into one of my projects, believe it or not. Now let's finish the outside of the birdhouses. Okay, so I'm going to try just varnishing a couple of them. I really loved the patina of them once they were wet. And I think, I'm hoping that the, um, the varnish will bring that patina out. So I'm hanging them off of the apple tree here. And um, a recommendation from my local uh, like home improvement store recommended this. So I'm using spray for now because the other one was like 30 bucks for a container and I wasn't sure how it was going to proceed. So I thought I would do this first. So I am going to spray these down. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff the hole with maybe some paper towel or something just so that I know that the polyurethane doesn't go in and get on the nesting material that the birds are going to be in. So let me, or maybe a rag, maybe I'll put a cotton rag in there first. Okay, so you can see I have like a paper towel that I stuffed inside, uh, just enough so that I still can still put varnish all over it, including the edges of the hole, but I can protect the insides. And I'm just going to take my oil-based polyurethane and I'm going to spray it in short, first, and light coats. Now, one of the reasons I chose today to do the project is because we have been having horrible windstorms. We always have a pretty good go breeze going and I don't want things sticking into the varnish. So even though my wind machine looks like, my wind sculpture looks like there's a lot of breeze, it's actually a very, very quiet day here. Um, it's close to 60. Our, our ice is melting finally, no more snow. And because it's so calm out, I don't have to worry about things blowing into them as they're drying now that I've done the first coat of poly. The reason I chose this product was because it has no mold. It ha it's mold and mildew resistant. It seals out mold, mildew and it's for the outside. So I like to keep things as natural as possible, but it is important that we keep the environment that the birds are going to be nested in mildew free. So I just want to take a moment to show you how it looks just varnished. I think the outside is just so interesting. Um, as it was exposed to the elements, it aged, the outside aged, and there's definitely markings all over it that just remind me a lot of marbled paper or of stone. And um, I really thought I'd be painting over these, but I just really love how the outside looks just as is. I find it interesting and really beautiful. Okay, so now I have a couple more of the natural gourds and I am actually gonna stain it with um, some stain that I have left over from this decking that you can see the color of the decking. 
because I want to see what it's going to look like to um, stain the gourds. So I can't do both because if you know me, I'll end up with more stain on me than on the gourds if I try to record this at the same time. So I will be back to show you the result. Finally, I just want to compare the stained gourds, which are still drying, but almost done, to the varnished ones. Very subtle difference, but I, I think I like the varnished better. It has a better shine than the varnish on this stain. I'll probably give it another coat, but um, even though you can still see a lot of the, the beautiful texture on the gourd, I, I really think I like just the simple varnished better. I think you can see more of the beauty of the gourd. Reminds me a lot of marbled paper. And the ones that are really dark, like this one, I might consider painting that with like a latex paint, a solid color, and maybe doing a little... Um, decorative painting onto it. So there's so many options you can do, just the straight varnish, a stain, or a latex paint. All right guys, so the next step, one of the final steps, is putting a hole in the bottom of the gourd because if ever water gets in, we don't want that water to be standing water for the birds, so we're gonna put a drainage hole in the bottom. Let's see that hole. So didn't use a very big hole and um, we tried to choose the low point of the gourd so that it would drain if ever like rainwater got in there. So in the end, we did one to three holes in each gourd, depending on the shape of the gourd. If we thought that water would settle in one spot, we put a um, couple of holes in or where we felt it went the best. Okay, here's another tip on what to do and not to do. So when you're putting your hole in, you're trying to find an aesthetically pleasing place to put it. But what we've noticed is, if you look from the top, you wanna to keep your birds dry, right? You don't want driving rain or wind going in. And these holes look pretty good. Like this one might have, should have maybe gone down just a hair lower. So the angle wasn't somewhat open to rain. Or see, this one is a lot better. It's more flush. This one we did, I think, too high. Because if you look from the top, you can see a little bit inside. Which means when it rains, you know, rain might be able to pool inside of there for the birds. So I'm thinking I'll put this one more under cover um, so that it doesn't get as wet. So I'm thinking putting holes in your gourds... Need, you need to think about the birds and where they're going to be. This one, as it hangs, you can see it's super uh, flush. You can't see inside of that gourd at all, which means this one will provide a good amount of protection. Um, looking from above, I think that's the best way when it's hanging, whether you can tell whether or not your hole is going to provide protection or not. Clearly, this one was a little high. So thanks so much for joining me on my video about bottle gourds. As you're planning your garden for this spring, I hope you'll consider if you have some good soil and a little place that leaves can trellis or spread like over a deck railing or a corner of a garden like mine, that you um, put a few seeds in the ground because not only are they super fun to watch grow, they are super cool to make something out of the following year. Thanks for stopping by my channel and I'll see you the next video. Bye. Those are our gourd seeds. The gourd is just...